According to creationists, the purpose of modern geology is to prove that the Earth is old enough to allow for evolution's necessary time frame. Geologists use disproven techniques to calculate the age of rocks, such as radiometric dating, but experiments show that the Earth was actually formed 6,000 years ago and flooded 2,000 years later. However, a simple study of the history of geology shows this to be entirely wrong. Originally, two opposing views on the formation of rock emerged. One presupposed the Bible's inerrancy and therefore could come to no other conclusion, and another held that stone forms initially from lava and then erodes into sediment. The latter is unquestionably true, no matter one's religious beliefs or biases, and to deny it is to reject a basic fact. However, this theory requires timescales much larger than 6,000 years to explain the Earth's geology and geography. By 1749, it was understood that the Earth was at least 75,000 years old, and as more data was gathered, the age increased. The lack of an effective dating system made it impossible to know for certain, but prior to Darwin publishing The Origin of Species, estimates ranged from 100 million to several billion years. These dates had nothing whatsoever to do with evolution, but rather with a study of geology based on truth, not the desire to confirm the Bible's accuracy. Despite creationists claiming that geologists constantly change their measurements, and therefore really don't know what they're doing, the Earth's age has been calculated in the billions of years for two and a half centuries. Radiometric dating is merely the most accurate and reliable means, and the age geologists now provide has been stable at approximately four and a half billion years since 1953. Geologists are only interested in the most accurate explanation for the Earth's structure, and if it contradicts Genesis, then the latter cannot be held to be true. As I mentioned in a previous video in this series, a glaring problem for creationists is the Canadian Shield. This is a slab of igneous and metamorphic rock with a thin layer of soil on it, stretching from the Northwest Passage to the Great Lakes and the Arctic Ocean to the Atlantic, an area half the size of the United States. Flood models fail to explain why this region is almost completely devoid of sediment, but in other areas it's a mile deep. A single deposition would not be laid down so unevenly. However, the shield shows clear indications of glaciation, such as striations and glacial erratics, so perhaps an ice sheet can explain this loss of material. Most simply, glacial erosion is only about 5 meters per 1.2 million years, so immediately this idea is shown to be wrong. Since any existing ice sheets would have been submerged and either floated to the surface or broken up during the flood, the glaciers would have had to form afresh. Like all glaciers, they would have started in the highlands, such as the Baffin Mountains, where ice fields still exist. That means they would have to travel at least 2,400 kilometers to reach the maximum extent, and assuming a very liberal rate of growth of 200 meters per year, this would take 12,000 years. Of course, how quickly a glacier grows depends on a number of factors, including how much it melts in the summer and the steepness of its slope. For the ice sheets to travel from north to south would actually require them to move uphill, significantly slowing their progress. They would have then required thousands more years to melt away. What's more, if they were to scour off a mile of sediment, we should find a moraine along the southern extent almost the size of the Rocky Mountains. There certainly was extensive glaciation on the Canadian Shield, but there was far less sediment than creationist models require, thousands more years than they allow for the ice to extend and recede, and 11,000 more years for the moraines to be eroded. Genesis utterly fails to explain this immense geologic feature. Another major problem for creationists is that of fossilized coral buried under hundreds of meters of sediment. Again, according to creationist models, the only source for the sediment, and the only possible way coral could grow in places like the Appalachians, is for the area to have been flooded during the Noachian Deluge. Unfortunately, coral takes decades to millennia to grow to full size, so unless Noah was floating around for several centuries after the rain stopped, the coral couldn't have grown to the extent it did. Even more troubling is that the coral was only buried after having reached maturity, which would require the silt in the ocean to remain suspended for years after the flood stirred it up. This simply doesn't happen. As soon as water becomes calm, any particles in it settle out. It would also contradict creationist hypotheses about how animals are buried in distinct layers of sediment. Creationism cannot explain the Earth's geology in even the most basic cases. The Earth was never flooded.